Today on the Tech Bytes podcast, sponsored by Fortinet, we dive into Fortinet Advisor. This is a new generative AI offering designed to act as an assistant to SOC analysts and security teams by providing context-aware event summaries, potential impacts, and recommended responses while also keeping humans in the loop. Our guest to delve into the details is Kevin Faulkner, Director of Product Marketing for Fortisor at Fortinet. Uh, Kevin, welcome to the podcast. So generative AI, it's the new fashion in tech. Is this Fortinet just being buzzword compliant or does the company have a longer history with AI? Fortinet has a long history with uh, AI and in particular machine learning as well across the products, primarily for detection. So it's been over 10 years now that we've incorporated this kind of technology primarily into threat detection, also threat intelligence gathering and threat intelligence management for our, our threat feeds. Mm-hmm. So the idea of AI is is nothing new in the, in the security products. It's very, very important. And it's being improved, of course, all the time, but it's fundamental now and and has been for some time. Gen AI itself opens up a new stage and a new phase and a new way to use AI. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So in some ways, AI has sort of been in the background of Fortinet products, sort of looking for malware, new threats and so on. But I guess you could say generative AI sort of puts it to the forefront now because folks can actually interact with it. Exactly that. So it's a, think of it as an incremental type of artificial intelligence. It doesn't replace what we have for detection and other product functionality. But this is not kind of a new frontier where we can bring AI into an interactive mode uh, to provide this kind of level of assistance instead of being in the background and doing things for uh, on behalf and primarily detection for the customer. So you'd make the point that AI is sort of the follow on to machine learning and it's it's similar, which it is. It's not entirely dissimilar to machine learning. You've been doing it for years effectively as part of the security operation. So threat detection, you know, intelligent analysis for security operations. And really adding AI is just a normal organic, you know, progression in the platform. Yes and no. I think that the answer is yes, a normal progression will continue to happen across all these fronts. But the advent of using Gen AI really does change things. This is a this okay. is kind of one of those hockey st- stick moments in AI and its usefulness for the analyst and in an everyday scenario that's very visible and um, and clearly helpful to uh, to the person. So we could talk a- about some of those use cases and I think mm-hmm. that'd become a little clearer. Yeah, so let's talk about how you're delivering the product. Is it is it bundled with particular uh, products that Fortinet offers? How do I as a customer uh, interface with it, access it? Yeah, well, we have an overall effort uh, and in an overall offering and we call it Fortinet Advisor. And that is really our Gen AI engine and everything that goes with it, our complete solution that will be available in a series of products across the whole portfolio. Our first uh, first release is available within our SIM product 40 SIM and our SOAR product 40 SOAR, because that's where we saw the, the main pain points. Uh, but the the experience, and this is what's most important, the experience of using this advisor as an assistant is built into those two products. So while it it does share the technology and it has some very similarities in the experience, the whole idea is for this assistant, this AI assistant to be so built into your product that it's a natural thing to use like any other function within the product. And it helps you get things done within the context of the product. So can you give me an example of how I would use it if I was in say the, the SIEM console? Sure. So, for example, if you're in SIM, one of the things you're doing is you're you're trying to investigate events that happen or things perhaps that have already been identified as as incidents. Well, you can do that. Such a common thing will be like, what does this log mean Uh, that even we don't. Uh, force you to write uh, in natural language to in, to do an inquiry. We actually have a pull down menu for that one to invoke uh, the advisor, which mm-hmm. will say, say analyze this incident. Tell me what you know. So you will get a complete response that analyzes this incident, or in this case, an event. Um, this is a log from X, Y, and Z indicating X, Y, and Z recommended actions. Uh, the things you should look at are A, B, and C. So built right into the product, uh, you know, you're getting this kind of uh, advice, if you will, uh, or assistance right with a, with a click. 
Now, there's also a natural language interface where you can just basically type like, what is this malware? You know, have you seen this before? Um, is this somewhere in my system? So those sort of commands that you can, are, uh, can also interactively uh, use. And again, you, you're saying natural language queries. I don't have to learn sort of a, a specific language to interact with this. I can just ask a question like I would a human. Exactly. That's um, that's a big part of what Gen AI, right? Mm -hmm. Larynx that, uh, that is so new about our interaction with AI or our ability now to interact with, with AI is we can do it in natural language. And, you know, we take that one step further with the whole idea of the context within the product so that we not just say, well, natural language about tell me more about this malware or tell me about these IOCs. Uh, what we can do, or this threat actor, uh, what we also do is allow you to interact with product functions that are otherwise sometimes a little more complex to use. For example, doing a query for threat hunting in a SIM or generating a report. Now, rather than having to click and, and do either uh, some lower level language or at least a bunch of drop down menus to create a report and kind of hope you got it right, well, you can type it in. Give me a report that says over the last 30 days, which events happened on executive desktops and put that in English and it'll generate a report for you. You could also do stuff where you're already aware of the context. So because I'm in the desktop management platform or I'm in the SASE tool and I'm threat hunting inside of the SASE environment, the LLM would be know the context because what Fortinet Advisor is, it's partly is the generative AI. So it's an LLM from, you know, chat GPT or Google Bard or whatever. And that's going to do the LLM part. But there's another part to this AI, which Fortinet has developed, which says, oh, I know about security. So I'm going to frame the queries for you. I'm going to restrict the output um, to be in context of what's happening inside of the Fortinet platform. Yes, exactly. I think that these things are important to, to point out. And customers, customers ask, well, you know, how does it work? What you know, what's behind the curtain, if mm. you will. And um, and for our approach is to leverage open AI, if you will, public AI engines, and we mm -hmm. let the customer choose, for example, between open AI, uh, Google Bard, and we will be supporting additional engines here very shortly. So mm -hmm. let the customer choose which engines they they prefer that they're, they may, maybe have tested in other scenarios. And then, but the most important thing is that we surround that, if you will, into a complete solution where we augment that AI intelligence that we're getting from the public source uh, with our own threat intelligence, with the own our own Fortinet product and use case knowledge that makes this whole thing contextual. So if you say, build me a playbook or tell me, uh, suggest a playbook, we know what you're looking at right now for what incident. We know that we're building a playbook in 40 SOAR. It's not general information about playbooks mm. or automation mm. you, you want. You want to be able to, after you see what's generated for you, look at it, click on it and say, Put that into production so there's there's a whole kind of a three-step process uh response augmentation is is the formal name for it mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. ai world uh and that's where we bring uh kind of our if you will a secret sauce to the whole process so yeah. you're saying if i ask for a recommendation a playbook a response uh it will be generated in the correct syntax for the Fortinet platform, as opposed to sort of a general output that I would then have to apply myself and, and use all the correct syntax myself. That's absolutely correct. And that's one of the reasons why uh, we like to talk about it as an overall concept, if you will, and offering that is an assistant for our products that shares a lot of characteristics, no matter which product you're using. But on the other hand, if you ask me how I can use it, what will it do for me? That answer will vary depending on which product we've integrated it into and you know what are the key functions for that product. Sure, some things like some general questions you could always ask, but when it gets down to, you know, I'm using a SIM and I need to make a query, I'm using SOAR and I need to do X, Y, or Z, I'm in an EDR system and I need to do this, or, you know, we haven't talked about NetOps yet, but that's the next frontier as well for mm. us is to, is to say, hey, I'm a network operations engineer. What, can, what should I do? What policies, how are my policies affecting my traffic? Maybe how can I optimize things further? There's a whole set of things that are, would be in specific there. I see this as a whole SecOps or security operations. I think mostly we're going to see AI attack 
the operations environment first. It's going to make operations. So instead of lose, learning some arcane command line to make a query, or if I want to um, query a threat intelligence database looking for a particular thing, I don't want to have to go over here and take a pattern and load it into a threat database and say, can you find something that looks like this? That's a tool that AI can do really well. And somebody like Fortinet can execute inside of their existing tool. So you add it on. And then I can strap an LLM onto that AI, which is actually doing the work and make natural language queries to a lot of this. So operations now becomes, have I seen this threat somewhere else in my network? And off it goes. You're absolutely right. So I, we really believe that this is going to usher in a new era of the way that analysts work, uh, their their ease of getting information, their ease of, let's say, automation, uh, honestly, right, of different tasks. Get this for me, uh, get that for me. So imagine, you know, for example, with threat intelligence feeds, they're super important, right? But they're hard to manage, and then you still end up going looking and searching for, through them yourselves. Well, well, you can do this now much, yeah. much simpler uh, with a with an AI system. Instead of writing some Use arcane actual. query structured query language, you know, SQL derived, you know, database search thing, which is what we used to do, right? For a right. lot of sources, I'd learn to speak Fortinet's, you know, saw language to make a query about something. Now I'm going to be using AI to do that. So precisely. Yeah, right. And and that's really, I think, you know, the discussions that we had about this is that SecOps teams are really ripe for automation because there's so much data, so many threats, the threats are so diverse. And they're changing that it's becoming increasingly more and more expensive for companies to defend themselves. And of course, there's the business need here where companies have got a much higher level of obligation, especially in the US, to detect breaches early. They can't, they, if they have sort of discovered six months later, co companies can now fail. The risks of that, you know, some might survive, but some might actually just be completely wiped out by it. So the, the focus on security operations is much higher than it was, say, a year or two ago. Yes, uh, absolutely. And we've been asked, it's like, well, how did you choose which products you were going to put this in first? And it's because of what you just said. We understand that there's a pain point that is, is you know, AI is helping to address up until now. And so are, so is automation and SOAR in particular. But there's so much more that we can do. And this is an area where customers are absolutely focused in terms of uh, needing to make things more efficient, make things more uh, available. So one of the things that I wanted to ask here is that this AI is going to be very closely aligned to Fortinet. So it knows the tools that Fortinet has, the tools of cybersecurity. I guess the risk hit, there's a couple of quick risks that I'm going to touch on here. And I don't want to go too far into data privacy because we know that a lot of, if I make queries, the people who own AI systems are sometimes sucking that data back. Is that something that I should be concerned about here? Uh, it's absolutely that something that uh, anyone looking at this type of tool should uh, look into and uh, and uh, well not be concerned if it's with Fortinet, but be aware w of any vendor and what they're doing. We do not share any data with the public uh, AI engines mm -hmm. at all, and we don't allow the AI engine also to train on any of the questions that are being asked, and we mask the data that you share first of all so right. we're not sharing any data unless you type it in and even then we can automatically mask it so there's no private information that's being shared uh, that would would hurt you there's no information being shared at all that you didn't explicitly share and then the uh, the whole idea of the training is uh, is not happening at all hmm. uh, so this is a like a, there's kind of a, a basically a wall between what we can suck out of this engine right um, which hmm. is great but then you know let's keep uh, the transaction if you will to ourselves and then build that response within the Fortinet fabric itself. I don't want to go into the details here. We don't really have enough time, but that's enough to say, have a discussion with your reseller or Fortinet if you're really concerned about data privacy. But it sounds to me like it's covered. We've talked a lot in security or SecOps over the last three or four years about automation and orchestration and how we reduce the cost of security, but also improve the accuracy of security by using automation. It sounds to me like AI, in a certain way of looking at it, is actually an automation tool, right? Instead of writing a playbook or writing a script, you know, I can just now go to AI and effectively ask it to do something, and that would have been a script or a playbook before. That's absolutely the case. Uh, we really see this overlap uh, between these two things. 
right? at least for the, let's say, relatively simple couple of step kind of tasks, uh, right, that um, might have required a playbook before. Now you could tell AI to do it. It's like, you know, do this plus this and then go ahead and block, you know, find the endpoints that have this malware and then block them. Right. And so you could generate that uh, now through AI, where before you would have looked uh, for a playbook to do that in terms of, of automation. So it's going to bring automation uh, more and more to the forefront uh, and make it even simpler than, let's say, a classic uh, a playbook always required kind of approach. So they're very complementary. It sounds like it's also going to hopefully reduce my remediation or investigation timeline. Absolutely. And, and in fact, you know, that's the bottom line, right? That's what we're really trying to do. And in that way, it's completely in line uh, with what our objectives are for SOAR. Because what does SOAR do? It, you know, it tries to do things, number one, in anticipation of what you're going to need, for example, like going through your threat intelligence when you, there's an alert that arrives and seeing if uh, any of those IOCs can be uh, augmented and enriched with information that we already have. Now, we do that before we even pop a screen, right, for the mm. analyst to look at the alert. Well, that's you can call that that's not AI. That's automation in the background, knowing what to do and then being smart about doing it. Yeah. Uh, so so there there's a very much of a congruence, I think, between the objectives of SOAR and then what you can do and the objectives ultimately now, of uh, AI. Now, there's, there's an important thing here. The two things that you've talked about here, proactively alerting. And the second thing is writing queries um, you know, asking questions in native language or in, in query language through an LLM to get answers that you want. None of those are changing anything. So at this point in time, AI is a query or read only function. It's not going in and changing the configuration of your devices. If you say, tell me where this IP address and port number is matched in my firewall policies across my entire network, AI can do that for you, but it's not going to change anything as a result of that at this point. We are not going to end they automatically do anything on on the part of the customer unless they specifically ask for that function to be done. So right. in a couple of examples I gave you, uh, there are a couple of simple examples. So, uh, for example, build me a playbook to do X. Well, what happens is that we provide the basically the pseudocode or the workflow to the analyst at that point and say, do you like it basically? And they get a chance to review it and they can edit it. They can do anything they they would like with it. Mm. They can then hit a, a, a button that says, build this as an official playbook and you know put it into production but we're not in, we're not automatically doing that i we don't believe right now that, that that's the kind of let's say anticipatory action that should be taken we uh, we want to keep the decisioning in the hands uh, of of the analyst so yeah. for that those are the kind of examples we I mean, I mean that's that's what we want we don't right. it's too early to trust ai to make decisions for you and i don't think you as a vendor or uh, me as a customer wants AI to suddenly start reconfiguring my firewall rules or, you know, th detecting a threat and making changes to the threat response, right? We're not ready for that yet. It, it's we're, that, we're that but that could be ahead. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you think about it, uh, it absolutely could be ahead. And I think it would, it would make sense for a lot of a lot of, let's say, at least rudimentary things mm. uh, to be able to be done uh, that way and to be trusted to that level. Uh, now, today, no, I think especially with Gen AI, we're, we're seeing how useful it can be, but we're also seeing that it isn't perfect. I think of it as an additional information source right now um, that's totally valid, but it's mm. it's informing you, maybe maybe making some suggestions that are, are absolutely concrete and spot on, um, but based on knowledge that's out there, based on the experience of others, based on what mm -hmm. we've learned within Fortinet. So it's totally valid, but it's not yet autopilot we're not uh, yeah we're not we're not ready to do automatic driving right like some somebody some well-known person has promised it for the last decade but it's not ready yet um one exactly. last thing i wanted to ask you if i'm listening to this thinking how could i play with this or evaluate this or put it into my lab is there what's ai is added on to something so i'm going to have to get a product somewhere and install it or something to get to start working with 40 net advisor 
we do have free trials of our 40 SIM and 40 SOAR products. And in the free trial, you would have access to the advisor. And so you can play with it that way. The only uh, thing you have to do besides do the free trial is you have to have a key to the Gen AI, public Gen AI engine of your choice. Right. So that, that's a, a prerequisite to that. But otherwise, yeah, you can kick it around. I think you'd be impressed. And it is uh, it, right. We are not charging for this functionality within our products. So we, we see this as part and parcel of the functionality as as things move forward. And we all start to embrace a new generation of AI capabilities. I feel like we could talk about this more, but we do have to end here. So um, there'll be links in the show notes to this episode if you want to go uh, find out how to get your hands on Fortinet Advisor or just visit Fortinet.com. And I'm sure they will have all the information needed to get you to where you want to go. Uh, Thank you, Kevin, for joining us. And thanks to Fortinet for being a sponsor. Uh, Our sponsors make sure that we get to do everything we need to do here at Packet Pusher. So we appreciate it. And as always, thank you for listening. If you like this episode, you can find many more fine free technical podcasts along with our community blog. It's all at packetpushers.net. You can follow us on LinkedIn, hear us on Spotify. And if you would, leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.